The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is out on Switch and getting a lot of praise. I've seen people say it's the best game of the year. I've seen some say it's the game of the century or game of, of forever, the greatest game ever made. And people say that a lot about a lot of video games, but Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom really have gotten that. I think that's a very bold statement to make considering how many great games there are. But nevertheless, this game is selling like hotcakes. And because of that, recently in an interview, the producer of the game stated that because of how well it's selling, because you have to realize that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are the two highest selling Zelda games by a very wide margin. Ocarina of Time, I believe, was the closest one for its era, but even Breath of the Wild blows that one away. And Tears of the Kingdom is about to break Breath of the Wild's record very soon. Now, when it comes to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, they have this system that is, was new to Zelda, starting with Breath of the Wild, which is this sort of, like, super side questy open world environment. Now, some Zelda games, especially the first one, have been somewhat open world, and you've obviously had some side quests in the game, but not as much as Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is, as I call it, Legend of Skyrim, because that's kind of where it got inspired from. So the producer of these two games is now saying that because of the success, this is now the formula they're going to stick with going forward. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means they're going to make all the games have the same map because this new Tears of the Kingdom game shares a very similar map to Hyrule of Breath of the Wild, except that, of course, you have new areas to explore in the underworld and, of course, in the skies, and things have changed. So it's not like it's a directly, it's not directly the same world, but it's only a little, a little bit of time after, so not that much has changed, you know, give or take a few years. So with that being said, even though it's not 100% clear what he means, I think what he means is we're going to keep this very same system in play. Now, that does kind of, in a way, bug me for a couple reasons. Now, most of you know that I am, well, not most of you, some of you know that I am not a fan of Breath of the Wild. I did not like it. I was not up for the system weapon breaking. I played the game for 17 hours, did the best I could. It just didn't connect with me. I got lost too much. It took me too long to get to places. It just was not for me. Now, Tears of the Kingdom took what was already established in Breath of the Wild and improved upon it. You know, you have this new system where you have like a, a hand, an arm that you can use to like build your own rafts and your own little vehicles and stuff like that. And that's kind of like a Minecraft thing. And that to me is a very cool feature and one that improved the game. Not to mention that the story seems to be a, well, not seems to be, I know because I saw the story. The story of this game is much better than that of Breath of the Wild. I felt like it was a much better game story-wise and much more interesting. The characters were more interesting. There's more things that happened that were, that were, um, unique you had a party with you there's things in breath tears of the tears of the kingdom that are better so i do think it's a better game but as a fan of zelda that i have been since i was a little kid playing the original legend of zelda on nintendo going up to zelda 2 eventually link to the past my favorite game of all time is a link to the past that's my favorite game loved ocarina love link's awakening loved the oracle games wind waker i love these games it worries me because I don't want every Zelda game going forward to be like this. One of the things that I like about Zelda games is that each one has similarities, but they're ultimately different mechanics. I love how, for example, in Wind Waker, Hyrule is underwater, so you have to use the boat to get around. I like how in, um, for example, Ocarina of Time, you've got the time travel engine. You can go to the past and the future. You use your your ocarina to warp to different places, including going through time. And, you know, you have two different timelines to play in. That was super creative. Obviously, you've got a link to the past with the dark world and the light world, and then a link between worlds with, you know, that similar concept. You know, you've got um, Twilight Princess, which was still Hyrule, but a much darker, more seriously themed game. And you have Wolf Link. So each Zelda game kind of brings a different sort of feel and a different mechanic to this franchise. Same thing with Breath of the Wild. But if they're going to keep going with this, what's the fun in that? I mean, I am personally a favorite. I usually favorite the 2D top-down Zelda games. 
the Oracle games, the Minish Cap, Link, of, Link to the Past, Link Between Worlds, Link's Awakening. Those are the ones I truly love. Those are the ones that I will always cherish. I also love Ocarina, Majora's Mask, the 3D ones. I tend to w- want more 2D ones. You know what I mean? But the 3D ones are still very playable, and the 3D ones are still ones that I can, without question, pick up and play and love. When it comes to this, these new ones, though, they're big games. They require a lot of time. You understand what I'm saying? And because they require a lot of time, they're not the ones that I usually pick up too often. Plus, I didn't like Breath of the Wild. I talked about that. But I don't want Zelda to stick to the same formula. I don't want that. I want them to explore new things. For example, this game added the sky system. It added the system where you can, you can build things. Like, you could bring that back in the third Breath of the Wild game, you know, in that chain of, of games. You could bring stuff like that back, but I want something new. What if there's a way you can go into Dark World, but with the Breath of the Wild map? How would that change the gameplay? W- would that be too big for some people? You gotta explore two worlds that are that big? Seems like it, right? There's just a lot of different, you know, there's a lot of ways they can take this series. And if they're going to pigeonhole themselves into only making one type of game, it's a huge bummer because that's not what I want. I want each Zelda to be different, you know, and that's why when Breath of the Wild came out, even though I didn't like it, I understood why they did what they did. I understood they wanted to be different. I get it. You want to switch it up a little bit. And at that time, open world games were super popular. I get it. It's just, I don't want it to become a situation where you've got tons of open world games and then you're going to have people say, well, it's just the Breath of the Wild again with extra stuff. Because they're kind of already saying that about Tears of the Kingdom, even though Tears of the Kingdom, Tears of the Kingdom is much, much, much more improved as far as the mechanics they added that Breath of the Wild did not have. So... I just feel like, personally, I don't want them to stick to this. I want them to be creative. I I would love for them to bring back the classic sort of dungeons, different than the ones in these newer games, like where you have... And obviously, the newer ones do have some dungeons, but what I mean is, like, the classic, beautiful-looking entrances and then, like, solving the puzzle in a more linear way inside the dungeon... Um, figuring out the puzzles, figuring out which item, like getting an item in each dungeon that you can use to do something else in a different dungeon. Things like that I miss about Zelda. I like the puzzle solving in the dungeon. I like the combat. I very much like the combat in some of those 3D Zeldas and in some of the 2D Zeldas. So if they're just going to stick to Breath of the Wild style with the weapons breaking, it's going to bother me because I didn't like the weapons breaking. Are we never going to get a Zelda game again where the weapons don't break? Can I please maybe get my Master Sword and use it for the rest of the game or upgrade it? Like, there's just things that I want to be able to do without having to worry about the damn weapons breaking. It's the one mechanic that hurt Breath of the Wild the most for me. It really killed the game for me. So, will they at least do away with that? They didn't in this one, and people still loved it. I know they improved on it, but... I don't want there to be just a bunch of Breath of the Wild sequels. There has to be something else. And that, and ultimately, even if you're a fan of these two games, even if you love them, even you have to sit there critically and say, they can't keep making them like this. They have to change things up. So I want to hear from both Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom fans and people who don't like those games to give me your thoughts on what they could do next that's different and what you would like them to do. I would like to hear that for sure in the comments. Anyways, take care, y'all, and I'll see you soon.